Hi everybody, I'm Dr. John LaPook. Welcome to CBSDoc.com. Here's the big question we all want to know. Can being happy actually make you healthier? Well, I'm here with Karina Davidson, PhD, who is a Associate Professor of Medicine and Psychiatry at Columbia University Medical Center in New York, yes. who's going to help us figure out the answer to this question. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Um, I'm very excited to say that in an observational study of a very large number of adults, we did in fact find that those people who both reported being happy and when coded by a professional appeared to be happy had uh, less risk of heart disease over the next 10 years. How do you measure whether somebody's happy? Um, what we did was we had a structured clinical interview and we asked pa patients if they gave us permission to videotape it and then trained coders actually watched these patients talking about their daily lives, their daily stressors, what bothered them and give people a score from one, almost no expression of positive affect, to five, extreme positive affect. Wouldn't it be a lot simpler to just say, if you're happy and you know it? Raise your hand. <laughs> Un no. Unfortunately, um, we all have perceptions of ourselves that perhaps aren't shared by everyone around us. So what we found was that this fairly simple observational scale predicted um, independent of medical risk factors and in a sample that was initially free of any heart disease, um, that those who had high levels of happiness, pleasure, satisfaction in their daily life, the ability to look in good cheer, um, had fewer heart attacks across the next 10 years. Take me through the risk. Okay. So so if you were a five, you actually had 22% more protection than someone who scored a four. The person who had a four actually was 22% more protected than someone who had a three, and so on. And how about one compared to five? Th that was a fairly large range. Most of the heart attacks were in the ones and twos, as right. you can imagine. So what everybody out there wants to know, of course, is how does this help me? Unfortunately, in a new area of science, which studying positive affect is pretty new, we're all just starting to figure out how to measure it and how to understand it, we don't yet have interventions that we know actually change your risk of heart disease. We have mental health studies where people um, experimentally were randomized to, for a therapist to help them learn how to be happier people, how to induce positive affect, and those had um, impacts on quality of life. So we know that it affects or improves your mental health. What we don't yet have trial data about is whether it alters your physical health. We have three speculations about why it is that positive affect may have s such a benefit for physical health. The first is that happier people from other studies we do know engage in, in more heart healthy behavior. So they tend to sleep better, they tend to smoke less, they tend to report eating a better diet. When you are in a state of happiness, or satisfaction or pleasure or um, joy, you actually decrease physiologically your stress hormones. Your blood pressure lowers, your heart rate slows, your breath rate slows down. And there are, are some speculations that if you spend more of your life in a relaxed position, it's sometimes called a relaxation response, you're actually being protective of your cardiovascular system. All right, yes. that's two. What's the third? The third is that there is, because this was an observational study, it's entirely possible that there's um, a third common cause, that genetics predispose you to be a happy person and genetics predispose you to be at less risk for heart disease. So there's a happy happiness gene, and on that same gene or near that same gene, Exactly. Live long gene. And we do know that identical twins reared apart uh, tend to have similar temperaments, particularly for things like positive affect. So there is definitely a genetic component to being a happy person. So what's the take home lesson for people? If you are not naturally a happy person, you should be thinking about how you can get a little bit of enjoyment or pleasurable activities into your day. I can't tell you that you should be doing it for your physical health, right. but I can tell you right now that it's good for your mental health. All right. Well, Karina Davidson, PhD, thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for joining me. And what's the worst that can happen? If it turns out that becoming happy doesn't really increase your longevity, then at least you're happier. So really, it's kind of a no-brainer. I'm Dr. John LaPook for CBSDoc.com. Good day and good health.